It's time for local stories from across the East. Local food. Local fashion. Local businesses. This is your home for local. This is the East's Daily Download on Eastern North Carolina CW. Hello and welcome to the East Daily Download. My name is Mark and I will be your tour guide on this adventure across the East. I am uh, watching the WNCT mobile app, more specifically the East Daily Download. So the show you're watching right now, I'm watching. Huh, how does that work? Hmm. Anyway, so I just want to let you know that you can watch the East Daily Download wherever you are, Eastern North Carolina or anywhere in the world by getting the WNCT mobile app. You can get it at the Google Play or the App Store for free. The best price of all free. Anyway, so you download it and you watch. Um, so wherever you are, oh, this is good stuff. Um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put that on pause just for a second. There we go. And uh, talk to you. So how's your day? Hope you're off to a good start so far. Um, we have a big show in store for you beside the mobile app push. Don't forget to get it. Uh, and we're going to do that. And right now what we're going to do is we're going to check in with our old friend WNCT9 First Alert Chief Meteorologist Jerry Jackson because he has a special story for us. Let's take a look. Now downloading Weather School. Our weather kid this week is Pearson. He's in the sixth grade but already knows what he wants out of life. I want to work for NASA. Okay. I want to work as a um, space engineer. Mm -hmm. I want to work for building rovers with Mars, and I want to. There's a lot of things that I want to do. I also want to be an astrophysicist to yeah. help kind of come up with ways to get rockets to Mars. Pearson also enjoys the outdoors. He's really into scouts and he enjoys competing in mountain bike competitions. There's special bikes mm -hmm. and there's different styles of riding. They have cross country, endurance, they have dirt jumping, which is just you jump off the giant dirt mounds. Pearson may like being outdoors, but he prefers cold weather. I just spent a lot of time in it in Alaska and it was just generally getting used to it and then it was also being able to do a lot more things we can't do here. What impressed me most about Pearson was his skill on the weather wall. He was well organized, calm, and professional. PM, you're going to have that rain hitting Greenville, and right around Thursday, that cold front is going to hit Greenville, and it's going to bring, like I said, rain and thunderstorms. It was a real treat getting to know Pearson. We welcome him to our Weather Kids family. Now, if your child would like to become a WNCT 9 on your side first alert weather kit, send me an email to jjackson at wnct.com. I'll explain how everything works. For the WNCT 9 on your side first alert weather kids, I'm Chief Meteorologist Jerry Jackson. Class dismissed. Jerry does a good job. He lets you know when something is going to transpire. Um, I have the app on my phone and the radar on my phone. It helps me know when the storm is coming up. One moment I really appreciated was when Hurricane Florence was about and the way Jerry really let you know what was gonna happen. That was one moment that made my decision for us to leave town. Craven County, we hit, got hit bad. I just wanted to say y'all continue to do what you're doing. Now downloading Wacky Wednesday. Making a broom stand on its own is the latest viral challenge that's sweeping the nation, despite the fact that there's no real evidence that it's even a thing. A recent viral tweet claims NASA said because of the Earth's gravitational pull, February 10th is the only day one can do this. Yeah, there's no evidence that NASA ever said this, but the internet is, of course, still running with it. However, it has less to do with stars and planets and more to do with simple balance. And if you can actually make the bristles make a small little tripod down there, they'll stand up any day. People right. are saying that it's because the planets are lining up. No. NASA is probably bristling at the idea of people getting the science wrong. Still, it makes for a pretty fun party trick. Folks in Nebraska found a unique way to raise money. Donkey basketball. Oh, it's a thing, all right. Riders saddled up in a Crete gymnasium for the event, and cleanup crews were on hand for any, uh, accidents. The idea is simple. Score a basket while riding on a donkey. Easier said than done when your teammate is a stubborn ass. But they are. Organizers speculated the event may have brought in at least $2,000, which goes to benefit the local future farmers of America. 
Finally, the skies over Colorado were lit up by what is officially the largest firework ever launched. The 2,800-pound explosive was fired at over 300 miles an hour and rose over a mile in the air before erupting in a brilliant flash of record-breaking light. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Hey, we're back here on the East Daily Download looking at our Instagram page. I'm just going through and looking at the pictures and we've got video here, um, great stuff, uh, interviews we put up there, pictures we put up there, all kinds of great stuff. Well, that was fun. Uh, anyway, East Daily Download, currently we have, what does it say? We have uh, 130 followers. So I'm going to make a challenge to everybody out there in TV land, in mobile app land, WNCT.com under the download tab land to go and like our Instagram page. Follow us. It'll be worth your while. We do a lot of great stuff and have a lot of fun. Also, don't forget Facebook. Another good one. Um, another thing that's good is the next story we have coming up for you right now. So check this out. I'm June bacon Bercy, meteorologist from the National Weather Service. She had a dream that became a legacy. She always loved the atmosphere. Uh, we grew up with weather balloons. June Bacon Bercy would leave her home in Wichita to earn her master's degree at UCLA. My mom was very focused on making sure we knew our roots. Her daughter says her heritage was just as important as the future she was paving for meteorologists and women of color. From her perspective, she had the skills and the, and the clear path from a, an, an intellectual uh, curiosity to uh, pursue a path that uh, had not um, been paid before. Already cold air is still barreling down in the midsection of our country. She'd become the first woman, an African American, to be awarded the American Meteorological Society seal of approval for excellence in television weather casting. The weekend weather with June Bacon Bercy bears the seal of approval of the American Meteorological Society. Her career included working at NOAA, the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, and the National Weather Service, all at a time when men greatly outweighed women in scientific fields. She was obviously the woman, only woman in most of her classes. She faced, I, I think, more uh, issues with her gender than her race. When she was called a weather girl, she, she would smile and and say how, uh, you know, how proud she was to you know, be a meteorologist. Advancing the science of meteorology was a big goal of June's, particularly with women. That's what drew her to a network game show winning $64,000. That was her vision of being able to start a scholarship for women in meteorology. Leaving a legacy that paved the way for so many to follow. In Wichita, Chief Meteorologist Lisa Teachman for Hidden History. Our nation's capital, decisions are made here that affect all of us. And today, more than ever, people want truth, understanding, and accountability. So join us every evening as we bring you CBS News original reporting from around the world, while keeping our eye on what's going on right here in Washington. And bringing you the latest news and weather across the East. The CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell from Washington, D.C. After WNCT 9 and your side news. Trees provide oxygen, which humans need to survive. The Relief Washington organization is working to help replenish and add trees to the area, like the one you see behind me, to help with the environment and our health. Plant, promote, protect trees. That's Relief Washington's mission. We've always had an abundance of trees, but we have lost a lot in the last 50 years or so. Heather Thinpon is Relief Washington's president. Our organization's main goal is to plant trees in and around the city of Washington in as many public spaces uh, that, that we can. Working off donations, they've seen tremendous support from the community. People who give money can name a tree in someone's honor. So far, they've planted nearly 35 trees around Washington. We have, I believe, seven here downtown. Uh, we have about 12 out at the sports complex uh, by the soccer fields 
on the north side of town and then we have about another 15 or so that have been planted in a couple of locations in town. They've also gotten a lot of attention from local artists. The organization awarded $100 to the best tree themed piece at the North Carolina Wildlife Arts Festival. We came and we voted on this lovely little piece right here called Birds in a Boot. And so if you notice, those are actually little babies inside the boot on the tree. And we just thought that really tied in the creativity and the recycling of our animals and you know how our world still does impact their world as well. Although Relief Washington is a fairly new organization, they hope to have more than 100 trees planted within the next year. In Beaufort County, Madeline Ashley, nine on your side. This is Bernie Ritter. I'm the news director at uh, WNCT in Greenville, North Carolina. We're here in our new w, uh, WNCT digital studio. We want to be able to give you information, news and information now, not waiting for five, you know, six. We'll have things like you know, Delisa Robles, who does our Spanish uh, speaking news segment, afternoon news updates, special reports, breaking news can come out of this, no, come out of this room, because we're not like doing conventional broadcasts. This is where our news has been going for a long time, what we're calling WNCT now. Hey, we're back here on the East Daily Download. We still have a lot of show to come today. We have a good time. I hope your day's off to a great start so far. Hey, I want to tell you about two things that are still ahead. Uh, Q&A with AQ. Angie Casada is here to answer your questions. Always a great time. You provide great questions. She has some very interesting answers. So don't forget to send her questions. You can do that at downloadedwnct.com or using the East Daily Download hashtag on Facebook and Instagram. Um, okay, one other great thing that we have, it's new to the show, is the Farm Report. Our WNCT, as uh, Katie Augustine, uh, does those. She does a great job with it. So check these stories out. We'll be back in a little bit. I, I'm sorry, I think we, we skipped the intros. I am Abigail Thomas, usually just Tommy. Abigail Thomas is the first female chief of police in Los Angeles. And she's a native New Yorker. You might be able to hear, I am not from these parts. Some people even say I have an accent. <laughs> Who knew? She is a transplant in LA and is sort of getting used to the inner workings of the, the police department as it relates to the city itself. It's a very much a boys club in a lot of respects. Edie's character, Tommy, is always looking for the right thing to do. She's got confidence in what her mission is. She believes certain things are right, and I don't know if that's by virtue of the fact that she's a woman or just that she is who she is. Tommy is grappling with how we as a community progress and become more open and accepting while still having law and order. I was assaulted once. He wanted sex and my silence. What did you do? I broke his nose. Every script has had some relevance to what's going on right now in our country. We reference the Me Too movement, immigration things that have been happening in America recently, and a lot of stuff involving race. It has a sort of ripped from the headlines type of trajectory. The headlines they're choosing to go further into are interesting and impactful for a broad range of viewers. How do I look? Impressive. <laughs> I think that in television, you seek out leading roles who you can either identify with or you can aspire to be. Tommy is both of those things. We are at a time now where there's room for everybody at the table and she is taking her space. She is wanting to err more on the side of straight up truth and the chips will fall where they will. Clarkson is daytime television's newest superstar. Ah, Kelly Clarkson! Engaging with natural enthusiasm. You know what I love about you? You have no chill. No. <laughs> I have no filter, clearly. Completely genuine. It's just a really important thing that you know that she's working so hard. She's giving the people what they want. The gang is back together, y'all. It's an American idol. Yeah. What was your favorite moment? You came in and said I was like, yo, she's fire right there. Really? Oh, yeah. Even if you're lying, I'll take no. it. <laughs> the Kelly Clarkson Show. Kelly? 
It rocks. Weekdays at 3 on WNCT 9 on your side. During the winter months, farmers are attending local and extension meetings to learn about new products and techniques that they can apply to their farm. The pig was one of the first animals to be domesticated over 6,000 years ago. The Chinese were the first to raise wild pigs for food. The Pitt County Soil and Water Conservation District is hosting the 2020 Coastal Envirothon. The Envirothon competition is scheduled for March 17th at Weyerhaeuser's Cool Springs Environmental Education Center. The Envirothon program is a competitive event for high school and middle school teams. They compete in a natural resources, knowledge, and ecology field day against other teams. It stimulates, reinforces, and enhances students' interest in the environment and in our state's natural resources. And to finish off this week's farm report, here's an Eastern North Carolina farm fact. According to the latest data from the Agricultural Census, Duplin County ranks number one in North Carolina for most acres harvested of hay and highest number of broiler chickens produced. And that's 69.8 million broiler chickens and 80,000 tons of hay. For the East Daily Download Farm Report, I'm Katie Augustine. What are online originals? Local stories. A grant is allowing Duplin County to continue helping senior citizens. Local documentaries. Here today at the Ronald McDonald House of Eastern North Carolina. They've just finished their expansion. Special features. I certainly need some help with my skills on archery. Behind the scenes. From tap rooms, to retail, to fitness. Everything you need at your fingertips. WNCT.com online originals. Teachers want the best for their students. I want to give them every opportunity that every other student has in every other county. Erin Strohshine is an art teacher at Havelock Middle School. Like many teachers, she sometimes spends her own money to help students succeed. As for how much? Probably more than my husband would like to know. Various Craven County schools are partnering with the Craven Arts Council for the Valentine card sale. The goal is to raise money to help fund additional art supplies and relieve financial stress for teachers. It, that was started because the budget was cut, you know, 13, 14 years ago, and art teachers didn't have any budget or any supplies. More than a thousand cards are on display at the gallery in New Bern through the end of February. We'd really like the teachers to know that they have the support of the community and to give them a little bit of financial backing so that they really can uh, expose the kids to all sorts of arts. At $3.50 each, these cards generate more than $100 for every art teacher in the county. That money comes in hand because you can use that throughout the year where it's not a one-time spend your budget situation. Strohshine hopes the community sees this as more than a donation. It's an investment in the future of Craven County. And these kids are talented, you know, and the community might not always see that. They might just see the negatives, and I think that them spreading their abilities through art could be a very positive thing. Good morning world, Angie Casada here, Q&A with AQ, where you the viewers get to send in some amazing questions to download at WNCT.com and I get to answer them. So let's get right to it. The first question this morning is, what is your favorite thing about doing Q&A with AQ? My favorite thing about doing this segment is the fact that I get to just truly be myself and I get to interact with you, the viewers. You guys send in some great questions, whether they're personal, about ENC, and I could just, you know, answer them the way I'd like to answer them. Usually with news, it's kind of, you know, very simple to the point, straightforward, all facts. With this, I get to have a little fun, so it's awesome. Uh, what do you think Romeo does while you're at work? Romeo is my beautiful Russian blue mix cat. Um, what do I think what he does? When so I actually have a great security system that um, provides a video camera. So sometimes I like to check in on him to see what he's doing. And um, yeah, he's, he's, I think Romeo thinks he's a dog because he's always playing with his toys, chasing it, pouncing on it um, while he's by himself in the apartment, as well as um, he sleeps a lot. I feel like every time I look in the camera, he's knocked out, perched up on the wall or on the couch, just sleeping. So he's a pretty laid back cat. Let's see, what's the next question? When you were little, 
What did you want to be when you grew up? Oh man, let me tell you, I never thought that I would be on TV. Um, I originally wanted to be a basketball player because I played basketball my entire life. Um, even to the point when I got into college, when I was trying to decide which college I was going to go to, attend, play for, um, I wanted to go overseas and then I wanted to play professional basketball. But then that quickly shifted and I was like, you know what, I think I'm going to be a lawyer. And then I became, you know, I started taking pre-law, and then I was like, what? I like marketing, and then I like switched it. Then I was like, you know what, Lord, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. Just started praying for, you know, more insight and see, you know, what opportunities would present itself. And then I got an opportunity to talk in my college studio for their weekly update, and I covered sports. So I was like, you know what? Since I played basketball and I love sports, let me get paid for it just talking about it since I do it all the time. So I wanted to be a sports reporter and that's how I got into broadcast and journalism and now I'm here. Well, actually that's all the questions we have. So again, if you have any questions, please email us at download at wnct.com. I love your questions. Again, email me because I will answer them. Angie Casada, East Daily Download. Well, that is going to do it for this episode of the East Daily Download. I'm just checking out our Instagram page, seeing if anybody has liked it since we started talking about it earlier. Oh, I'm sad to report the answer is no. So hurry up and do that right now. Okay, and don't forget WNCT.com under the download tab. You can watch the show, the WNCT mobile app, available for free at Google Play in the App Store. You can watch the show on the go anywhere. Ah, I think that's going to do it. That's my sales pitch for you for today. So uh, check us out and uh, hope you have a great day. And we'll see you back on the next East Daily Download. And I'm going to go uh, check out some more stories that we put up on Instagram. Okay? Have a great day, everybody. See you later. When we hit the road for the next edition of the East Daily Download, we meet up with our friends at the Down East Wood Ducks. We go behind the scenes of young Sheldon. We've got hidden history. And since it's Thursday, a loving home is coming your way. We'll see you on the next edition of the East Daily Download on Eastern North Carolina, CW.